All right, guys, how about now? Give me a yes if you can hear me. All right, I don't, uh, I did another Zoom with somebody else was hosting it on Monday. And I don't know what Zoom has updated, but I did absolutely nothing on my computer. All I did was just click the, uh, click the normal, just like I normally do. And it uh, didn't work for the person that was hosting it Monday, and it didn't work for me today either. So, all right, guys, let's um, dive into this. Let's go back over here. All right, what, um, let me do the, we got the participants over here. Zoom's been changing a lot of stuff. I mean, they're making it, I guess, safer. Um, be nice if they've told us about this before they did it. All right, what do you guys want to see tonight? I'm going to shut my video off just so the uh, streaming part of it can be faster. So let's go over here. There. All right. So what do you, Trevor, I have no idea. That's something Paul's got going on uh, with his inner circle. Um, I don't know anything about it. Uh, don't know anything about them. Uh, the same email you got is the same email I got. And that's the first time I heard about it. So we're in the same shoes. But what do you all want to um, see tonight that you need the most help with? Type it in the chat box here. <laughs> Greg. Sure, we can do bits and Elliot wave together without roller coaster. All right, let me write this down here. I want to use bits and Elliot wave without roller coaster checklist. And I don't have a written checklist, guys. It's just a mental one that I run through each time. Uh, Jamie, I don't, um, I don't know about scanning. For um, I don't, I don't have a scanner that I scan through. And I, one thing I'm going to tell you guys: a couple other people, uh, somebody posted this on Twitter and it was a very good deal. When I usually talk to somebody, especially if they're struggling, the first thing I ask them is what are they trading? And they'll give me a list of like 17 things. I want to tell you right now, there is no possible way that you can trade 17 things know them like the back of your hand and know everything that's going on with them, track them, and catch a move looking at 17 different things. It's just, it's mathematically impossible. I've tried it at on, and I'll, I'll tell you what I got down to. One, it's, I can only trade one thing good. If I do two, eh, sometimes if you get lucky and they both go the same way, great. Um, if they don't, the one that wins, I lose. I don't catch the loser fast enough uh, before the winner, and it's you just end up wasting. Uh, uh, you end up giving away profit by trying to trade two or three different things. You miss out on getting an entry because you're on another chart instead of just focusing on what. It's like my response I put on Twitter was, you. Um, you don't see an orthopedic surgeon, you know, pulling a tooth or doing brain surgery that he does what he does best. And that's it that and he'll refer you off to somebody else. And that's what um, the, I would recommend sticking with one thing and mastering it before you go moving on to something else that um, I think most of people's problems if their attention is spread out among 50 different things. But uh, to follow me on TradingView, guys, Swan, I think that's your question. Just go over here to ticker, drop down, and go to people. And then you just punch in J-Dub 
tick trader and you can't miss my bald head right there. Um, and that's how you can follow me and just click on there for that. And underneath that profile, I have all the videos of how to set up all the trade the fifth stuff on trading view. I am going to be shooting some new videos. I didn't get them done last week. I got too busy. Um, uh, two new videos that will be on, um, they'll be on trading view, but they'll be on the trade the fifth site on how to set everything up for your defaults and stuff. Ah, uh, Trevor, there ain't much that can be done with it. As, as my little brother says, it's a malfunctioning Chichia pet uh, that hasn't uh, fixed itself. <laughs> uh, Edith ES, why is there no buy setup in Roller Coaster Wave 3 today? Um, I have no idea what time frame, like, you know what I mean? You could be on any time frame, the whole nine yards. Uh, just looking at this 15 minute chart, I have not isolated this. So if you look over here, we should isolate at this low point right here. And let me turn off roller coaster. You want to go, you want to isolate from yesterday's higher low. So you could either do it off this point right here, which was, uh, 2015 at night or down here on this low point right here. I prefer this low point personally because it catches the move going up. So if you just hover over that candle and look right here where it says uh, bar number, 21,000, if I hover underneath there, it is 21,202. You just go to your Elliott Wave, click your sprocket, 21,202, click enter. And there's your wave count. So let's zoom in here and see what we got. So from today, you actually had a failed fifth wave there. That was an A, B. This was a one and a two. This was a three, it pulled back to a four and then it failed. Now, if you have your floor trader pivots on your chart, um, that's what these yellow dots are right there. I would have never taken that trade right there because you're right into a floor trader pivot. Those are, you can access those on any of your platforms and just add them on there, but that's what that floor trade, and you look at it, we got resistance all the way across the board. You did get, once we bust it through, a one and a two, and your three, this was a three right here, a four, and it hit the fifth wave target, and then it kept going. So this three became a, the reason uh, Edith on here, the three moves up because now it becomes, it completed a fifth wave and then now it's extending out. This was the three pulled back to the four, which if you zoom in here on your Elliott Wave software, you can see that that candle came down and touched the six, four moving average bottom line to the, I mean, almost to the tick and then pulled back up and completed a fifth wave right here on this candle. And then again, right over here, when we opened up, we came up and touched it, and then we've come back down on it. Now, this is a 15-minute uh, chart. I personally don't like taking 15-minute Elliott waves. 15-minute is like the highest time frame I like to take them on. Um, there's just too much that can happen in an hour or more. Let's go down to a five-minute. Same thing. We're going to go down and take that pivot down here. So that candle number is 21,017, which you look right here. I'm gonna hover down here again, 2115, 2117, 2116. So we just go up to Elliott Wave, click the sprocket, 21,017. Takes about six, seven seconds. Look at all those corrections in there. A lot of corrections. Uh, Trevor, that messaged me something different than here. Uh, floor trader pivots. Um, that's a whole different class, man. That uh, obviously you can look at it and see they work. 
uh, but they are underneath your normal indicators if you just Google underneath here and look for fight spell. Four pivots, four trader pivot points. There's all kinds of different ones on here that you can pick from. Uh, so we have, this was a failed, this is not on a five minute time frame. Today was not a good uh, a good day on here. I mean, it just barely, this one, you had a fifth wave move, but by the time you took it, it's 32.36 and the target was 32.38. That's two points. We're not in this game for two points. Uh, eight ticks. There's more to life than that. You're not going to make any money trying to make eight ticks. Uh, on there... But we need to go back. Um, let's go through, all right, on your bits and your Elliott wave. The first thing we need to do, and I'll, I'm gonna turn off bits, turn off Elliott wave, turn off those four trigger pivots. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is, and I'm gonna go over here and delete all the previous, things that were on this chart. And that's the one, this button down here on your far right is your object tree. Anything you draw, if I draw this line here, it's going to pop up over here. And you can lock it, you can right click it and rename it and do it, name it. Um, what is today, the 29th, 07, 29, 20. Trend line. <clears throat> and then that way you always know that that trend line, whatever, you know, I mean, you can name it whatever it is. You can name that uh, regression channel, whatever you want. But you know, the first thing that we do, and this is going to kind of, um, let's see, why is there no spy set up in Wall Coast early three today? Uh, Edith, the reason why is it didn't meet the requirements for it. That doesn't mean the market doesn't go up or down. <clears throat> and that's why like sometimes you'll see one day it races like a rocket somewhere and it doesn't give you a, a signal on it. It didn't meet the requirements of the roller coaster software for it to pop up. That doesn't mean it still doesn't go. You know what I mean? The market's going to do whatever it wants to do. Uh, <clears throat> here we go. Can we go through your checklist on how you set up your trade? So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click this little box here to, to hide the bottom part of the chart so we have more real estate space here. We're going to go to a daily chart and we're going to look at this. Here's the pivot back on March 23rd where we bottomed out. We're going to do a regression trend. You just hover over that box, go down, regression trend. Now here in this class, I've been pretty consistent of using a white channel for the daily and a red channel for the 60 minute. I'm going to stick with that. You can uh, color those anything you want, uh, but you just touch the candle. doesn't matter if I touch the candle at the top or the bottom of it and then drop it on the current candle. All right. And there we go. There's a chart. Now, if you right click, Two and minus two is the normal settings that are on here. I use high, low, close divided by three. There's other options in here. On my fourth wave pullbacks, I use close because it makes it a wider channel. But on high, low, close divided by three, that's the one I like. If you want to change the colors of it, you can just click on this, these boxes here. If you want to make the thickness, dot, you want straight lines on top, dotted lines in the middle, anything you want. That, uh, if you don't want them to extend to the right, you can take that off, um, leave them on there. Pearson's doesn't change much, but I'm going to leave them on there because I, I like them. All right, that, this is step one of where are we at in the trend. So right now, we have seen for one, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, for 25 trading days which is basically the entire month, um, more of that, from June 24th to now, which um, 
it's been over a month, but 20, 20 some trading days, we've only wicked above this center channel line a couple times. So heavy, heavy, heavy resistance of who knows, maybe possibly pushing down. I don't like to take trades in the middle of a channel. I want to be either at the, the center. I prefer to be at the bottom or the top that, but we don't know that, uh, but so right now we know we are in an uptrend, but for an entire month, we've been on the bottom half of that channel. So, and we've been one, two, three, four, five, six for the last week, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, the last 12 days since uh, March 15th, we've pretty much only had a range of 3253 to the bottom of the candles to 3201. So we've only had like a 52 point range for two weeks, uh, which is not very much. That's 25 up, 25 down. Um, <clears throat> not, not much. And how I'm getting that, guys, if you see this, let me just drop a horizontal line. All I'm doing is dropping a line right there and dropping. All I'm doing is dropping at the top of that candle there and the top of the, the bottom of the candle bottoms pretty much. And for the most part, I guess those two up there popped up a little bit more. If you drop it down to the other ones that are right there, it's about a 50 point range. Um, which make this thing's either going to break to the upside or break to the downside. And I don't know about you with all the pandemic stuff ending. Um, you know, a lot of companies, uh, tomorrow is a big day for, I think what they say four four tech companies report tomorrow that are 40% of the NASDAQ 100, uh, 40% of the volume of it. So, you know, they, tomorrow could be our big day that, it takes off and goes down. Um, but it is, but th this is the first step. Highlight um, your daily chart. Then you're gonna go down to an hourly chart and let me remove those lines I just put on there because horizontal line. And this, this right here on your object tree, anything you was drawing on there is on there. So we're gonna go down an hour. There's your out, there's your daily, all right? We're down to an hour and where we are at right now, if you were looking at, we could draw a channel probably from here to here and it would give us a pretty accurate channel. So we're gonna go over here and I have it saved under 15 minute, no background, but that's the red channel. I could drop it from there to there. All right, and let's bring this up. And lo and behold, look where we turned around and we've headed back down. Uh, so that actually is a good place because we bottom up there, we come back, bottom up there, come back up. Now me personally, let's hide that channel and then let's do another one from here to here, which is the current, current trend of where we're at. If you're trading during the day and you're looking for opportunities um, to trade in there, you don't have all day. If you're looking at a daily chart, yes, we know the momentum's up, but obviously it can go 40 points one direction before it turns around and goes 20 points the other one. So you need to have, you need to be able to look at your long-term timeframes, drop down to your lower term timeframes and find some entry points. So, Let's just, all right, look at bits. All I did was just add bits on here. And you guys will know that I talk about bits a lot because bits freaking works. That look at bits right here. Cyan came down through here and then popped right at the bottom channel line. It crossed over, I mean, right at the bottom channel line and took off and went and it's 32.20 and it went up to 32.57. It's 37 points, 120, 134 ticks out of that. That's just with bits. All right, so let's move this down. Now we're on a one hour time frame. Let's go down to 15 minutes. All right, we're gonna look for opportunities inside of that channel. 
Can you guys see this okay? Bits, uh, Trevor, Bits is looking for anything. It doesn't matter where it's at. This is an uptrend. It, it was a downtrend, came back up, and then when it hovers up above, even though the candles go below the yellow, the cyan did not. So it's testing that lagging point of control and then taking off or EMA, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Okay, good. So like on this one, it came over, it tested it. Now, when I went down to the smaller time frame, you notice it didn't cross over. On the 15 minute, it actually crossed over. So let's go down to five. Let's see where else, where else we got here. Okay, five minutes, it actually crossed over right here, right towards the bottom channel line. Now, you guys know I preach the um, price action breakdown book. It is an amazing book uh, of following the big banks and institutions with, you can follow them with Wix of what they're doing when they push it back down in. Typically when you see a big wick, that's when they're pushing it the other direction. If you look, that wick on that channel line pushed it back in. Wick pushed it back in, we went down. And then same way with this one, it came down, touched the bottom, Sellers tried pushing up, buyers pushed it back down, sellers came back, or buyers came back in, and then it has a, they just keep fighting. It's a constant battle. I mean, look at this candle here. This thing's massive both ways. They're just fighting. But cyan, you got a lot of chop in here that, now what is the, right? 32, 19, 25, so you have 3, 12. That's a 13 tick uh, area right there. So if you took that trade at the bottom channel line, it never turned around and went back, even when it came down and retested it again and kept going. That's out of there. Let's go down to, let's turn on roller coaster. Had a move there in the middle. Haven't had anything on there. Guys, the market, um, let's just put it this way. The week or two before the market's going to dump or climb like a rocket, it usually does this where nothing makes any sense. And that's where it's at right now. Nothing makes any sense. And the market is trying to figure out what it's going to do. They're trying to head fake everybody. Um, what I can tell you from using these indicators specifically for the last year and a half, when you have everything like – a lot of you guys that are in here every week, when we go through a chart, typically I can turn on roller coaster around a five minute and I'll have six or seven, um, you know, nice moves that are in there on that current trend. There ain't nothing in this one. There's one, you know what I mean? He had one uh, uh, alert there that never activated, another one there that never activated. Now it's respecting this channel really, really well. So you can use bits to find your entries in there. And um, also down here, uh, you know, looking at your bias dots, where you at on your oscillator. Um, here are your stochastic crossed over telling you to go long. Well, here, look, let's zoom in here. Let me make it bigger here so you guys can see. All right, so cyan, we've chopped all around the center channel line, which I've told you guys, I do not like taking center channel line trades. Uh, it typically chops you up, and it did. It just chopped all around in there. We come down, even though the candle went below the yellow line, the cyan line, if you look in there, touches the yellow and turns around to come back, okay? During those two candles that it went below, the candles actually went, not the cyan. If you look down here on your bias, the higher time frames went to indecision, to yellow. But look how long we've had green, okay? Look what happened the last time we had two yellow dots over here of indecision. We had massive up. Same way over here. Indecision, indecision, and which was on the channel line. And then when they turned green again, your stochastic crossover, we went over 20% going up for momentum up, and it did. It took off 18, went to 26, uh, same way back over in here. Now, you didn't get your stochastic crossover on this one, uh, 
you had a lot of consolidation on there and it took off from there. But this one right here specifically, your, your RSI, which I've told you guys, mark this down on your list too, is this is not part of trade the fifth, it's just a normal R, just RSI, relative strength index uh, indicator. Um, look at the candle here that wicked all over the freaking place where we went down in there, your RSI turned around and went, I mean, almost straight up for the next candle. And then Edith, uh, for the rules, is you want the cyan line to cross over the yellow, okay? We retested it, it already it retested it there, here, here, and it actually crossed down here. This was the, your first entry that you should have been in here was on this one here. But it came back and retested it, went up and retested it again right there and went up, retested it again, went up, retested it again, and then it failed and it crossed over right here. And when it crossed, where did it cross at? Right at that center channel line. So you've got a pretty good idea if we're crossing over the center channel line, it's probably going to go the other direction. And it did. But part of your rules, and we're going to go over here on that back to this one right here. So we come down and retest it. That it, Retesting it is the same as the cyan crossing over if we were below and it went across. So there's one reason to go long. We retested that yellow line. We're above, see your, here's your purple point of control dots. We're above the purple point of control dots on this candle right here. There's the dot right there if I hover over it. Uh, there's two reasons to go long. Drop, and what I do is just hold your mouse over that candle and just let go of your mouse and let it sit there. Now go down below and look. Your bias dots are green, three reasons to go long. Your oscillator is still green that uh, even though we went down smaller, it's still green and you know, I mean, you don't know if it's gonna climb or not, but it's not giving you a reason not to take it. Four reasons to go long. And then down here, two candles before, look at your stochastic that it went down, cross and the blue cross the red on that green candle pushing out coming out of there, and then you got your stochastic crossover of 20% going up, you got your stochastic arrow. There's five reasons to go long. And then uh, on top of that, let me turn on Elliott Wave real quick. You're gonna see some red and blue lines pop up on here in a second. All right, here are your 6-4 moving average lines. It is best to wait until you're outside of those 6-4 moving average lines. Now, we've met all the requirements right here that, uh, to take this trade. Now, if you waited until this arrow right here, you take it on the next candle, that's 32-34. Theoretically, you shouldn't take it until you're above this blue line right here, which would be 32-36. So it got you in two points earlier. Um, and then it took off and went from there. But let me turn off Elliott Wave. And that that is how you use roller coaster, I mean, excuse me, bits on finding these trades. Because right now the way the market is not making any sense. So let's go down to two minutes. Let's see what we can find in that same channel on a two minute. All right. We don't have, I mean, if you look on here, we don't have a lot of roller coaster. Look at these roller coaster moves. They're not hitting. So you have one, two, three. Yeah, a small one there, but I'm not going to count that. Four, five. Now, you did have a monster move there and pretty decent one down there. Six. So you had six failures, in my opinion, and two winners. That this is not in the groove. So if you drop your channel and you go down here and you look and you're right here and you look left, how many positives did I have? None, 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 none. Now it was in the groove back in this uh, move going down. It had some nice moves going down. Uh, really nice move. Now see back here, winner, 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 
never activated. Winter, 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 never activated. So this was in the groove in this period of time right here, like really in the groove. Right now, we two minutes uh, is not in the groove. Let's go to three, three minutes. Go in there and let's see what we got with three minutes. No, nothing going there. Let's go to four. Got one nice one there. No, that uh, now you have a current move down. Probably going to stop out on that channel line and get back into that channel. But four minutes isn't good either. That so right now, and that's why, like, if you, you want to call it, I mean, I think one of you guys, uh, Trevor, I wouldn't consider the yellow a pause in the trend uh, because it. It's when it crosses over and goes the other direction, that's when a, a change is happening. Like uh, when it moved, all right, we went down, down. Now, when this is going up like this, this is not a, a difference in uh, direction. It's just, you know, making its natural moves up and down. But when you get a move that is this far down, that's not normal. Um, if we were still in an uptrend, this would be bouncing off here somewhere and staying up. Um, for instance, look at this. We hit the top of the channel, came across to the bottom, and then came back up. This has still been going up. Even though it's a small up, it's still going up. This right here worries the hell out of me because it's angled over and going down. And... I don't know. I, I just don't like the way it looks on right now. Now, this is where your higher time frames come in, where you need to see where you're at in the big scheme of things. Let's turn on. So for the current trend, we're at the this from the bottom to the top, that channel right there is its own channel. But for the bigger trend from 1700 yesterday to 1700 today, 24 hour period, this channel, this bigger channel right here has been really good. Now in the grand scheme of things, let's see if we, there's our daily channel. So looking at, this is why you always gotta look at the big picture. What's going on in the big picture of things? As I said before, we've been in this lower channel since like June, 24th. So for an entire month, five trading weeks, we've been in this lower channel. We have not been able to bust through it. I mean, we've tried one, two, three, four, five, six times. Couldn't get there. Um, and it's looking like we're working our way down to the bottom of this channel. With those earnings reports coming out tomorrow, um, let's, what do you got here? What do you consider? Would you, what do you look for in bits approaching a channel break and essentially a reversal? Um, let's go down to five minutes. And I'm going to turn off. Let's go. Let me zoom in here. For bits approaching a channel break and essentially a reversal. All right. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to look for... Now, if you look on the five-minute one right now, we we crossed over on the center channel line. So that was a, more than likely. It's probably going to work its way down, and it did. It went all the way to the bottom. Now, this may come back up here and retest that yellow line and then work its way down. I don't know. Uh, I mean, when's the last time you've seen a whole bunch of yellow dots? way back over here um everything's been green and some yellow you know we haven't had any red for quite a while like a long time yeah stan there you go uh they gave me an opportunity for uh, Got that 130 turn around above on the rest ended up. Yeah, no, Stan, that's awesome. Uh, I'm glad that uh, you figured that out. 
Guys, Stan was asking, um, and same thing, Edith, you were asking me about why you don't see a C or uh, something else. It just doesn't make the requirements. The, the software paints the, uh, if it meets the requirements of a wave A, correction wave A, correction B, correction C, it's going to paint it. If it doesn't, it's not going to paint it. So uh, now it does. What Stan figured out was he was on the wrong uh, time frame. So if you're on a 15 minute, you need to isolate on a 15. If you're on a five, uh, there's not any uh, platform that I know of that will um, isolate uh, independently, like if you click between them. So you basically got to create another workspace. Uh, now you could go up here, this little button right here, you can make as many windows as you wanted. Um, I wouldn't get into the noise. I've tried this guys like this and it caused me more hell than uh, good of using uh, multiple screens like that. I'm just better off with one, uh, but you could create, I mean, just click up in your Google Chrome tab open trading view and open up another workspace and you guys could create, uh, you know, another workspace where you had a 15 minute, a five minute, a three minute, uh, isolated each day. And to isolate, all you do is look at the previous day's higher low. So let's see, we're on a five minutes. Yeah, this has been just trending up all day. So basically the low is going to be from overnight was, like I was telling you, 21,014, which I think, I think we have this on here. Yeah, 21,017 is not going to change it. So um, let's turn on Elliott Wave. On just a one little one in there. This one was a failed one. That's you, typically when you're getting close to a, a trend reversal, nothing will make sense. And um, none of these make any sense right now. It's because these indicators go off data. Well, when the data starts going haywire, you're going to get oddball uh, things coming out. When they don't make sense, that means don't trade. That Don't try to force a trade out of there. Uh, right now, and that's why we have Elliott Wave, Bits, and Roller Coaster. It gives you the opportunity. Right now, Elliott Wave is not, uh, this is not the market conditions for trading Elliott Wave. So we turn it off. Just take it off your screen and get it out of there. Awesome, Stan. That, uh, yeah, just go to your higher low of the overnight is what I do. So, I mean, you could technically, yeah, just right down here. And a lot of times that pivot is the pivot for the next trend of where we're at. But so anyhow, Elliott Wave is not working. We've already went through, and when I say not working, the market is not in the right conditions to trade Elliott Wave right now. That so we just take it off the take it off your chart. You don't need it. Now click on roller coaster. We went on roller coaster. Well, guess what? Roller coaster is not uh, popping off some trades with the current market conditions. So guess what? We turn off roller coaster. That's why we have them. Now you guys have been in here on Wednesdays when I'm doing this class, and you've seen where Elliott waves working. We're having multiple fifth wave moves. The roller coaster is picking up the third wave move almost every single time. Bits is pulling it two to three points before roller coaster, and it, all the things are perfect. Well, as you guys know in trading, nothing is ever perfect. Uh, and that's why we have all the different things, uh, the tools in your tool belt to figure out on trading. Right now, in my opinion, the one thing that you need that's working right now in the current market conditions is bits. Bits is giving you good signals. Uh, they're, they're reliable. They're right on there. You tie them with your oscillator. You tie them with your stochastic and your RSI. And they're really, really, really good. Now, uh, 
that uh, so we're on here. So let's go, let me, let's pick a different symbol real quick, just so I can have something totally different. Uh, you know, I haven't traded, I haven't looked at oil in like a million years. Let's just look at oil. All right, turn off bits. If I can find my button. All right, we're gonna go to a daily chart. Boy, oil has gone flat, like flat, flat, flat. So let's go to daily, you know, white channel. I'm not gonna count that one down there because the start of the trend is this pivot right here. And really and truthfully, oil has, I don't know if I would even count it from here to here. I'm gonna do it. I think the better one is from here to here. That's more flat. Let's just do this one from there. Yeah, I mean, look at it. We came up, touched it, came down, retested it, hit the top of the channel, hit the center channel, halfway back up. And then, like I told you, I don't like taking trades on that center channel line because it typically will chop you to pieces. And that's multiple days chopping up in there. Now, that doesn't mean we can't go down to a smaller time frame with bits and find another trade. This trade looks like it's going to come down here and hit the bottom. Yeah, no, Trevor, I... I've made some of my biggest trades with oil and, uh, and I, can, I assure you my biggest losses have always been with oil. So I don't mess with oil anymore either. I haven't messed with oil for, my God, probably a year. Um, so let's go down to an hour chart. There's your daily chart. I mean, this oil doesn't even look, I'm not even interested in that, but let's draw a, just for the uh, class, we're gonna go from this pivot here because this was kind of a trend here, drop down, and then we've been in this trend. So I'm gonna go from that low pivot to the current. All right, it's respected it pretty decent. I don't like this popping out over here. Oil always tends, uh, Oil and gold, like on the Elliott wave, on the green, amber, and red box, oil and gold will violate that box, but still come back and, you know, produce a nice Elliott wave. The other ones uh, are, you know, follow it pretty well. So now we have our hour chart. Let's go down to five minute. I got to zoom backwards to get trading view to show me those lines. There we go. All right, now this is what we're gonna look for. We are going to look for some roller coaster moves in here. Let's see what we got. Okay, this on a five minute, look back in here. Five minute has been pretty darn good. What is this red line? Oh, that's the current line. Yeah, so it's showing a short to go down, which we're looking at that channel just a, uh, a minute ago. I told you it looks like we're going to the bottom of the channel line, but we have a roller coaster short right now on there. Now, stochastics did cross over the candle before, but well, look, it's moving its way down right now as we speak. Racing down right now. That, uh, We'll see what we'll see what it does. It violated that roller coaster move and took it out, but we're at that low right now. But you go back and look. I mean, these are 4104, 4140. Um, I mean, it's a 360 dollar move on one contract. Now add in your bits and look right here. Your cyan came down, it crossed over right here at $41. If we look down below, we had short, 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 indecision, indecision for four candles. As soon as it crossed over, now there's your, let me blow this up a little bit larger so you can see it better. There's your purple point of control dots going right there. The purple point of control is right here. 
So this candle was actually above your point of control. So we're gonna we're gonna start grading this trade. You ready? Cyan cross over your yellow. One reason to go long. Then, uh, so sorry, I was reading the comment box. I'm trying to one screen and reading from another one. Cyan crosses over the yellow. One reason to go long. We're above the point of control dots. Two reasons to go long. Down below here, we went from solid red for a very long time to indecision, indecision, indecision. It's not green yet until this uh, candle right here. But I would, uh, I would take that that something is changing when you have uh, that many reds in a row and then you get some yellows. And then also, if you look right here on your oscillator, your oscillator crowned out down here and then smaller, 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 smaller. And there's your, there's your uh, signal was right here to go down. Your crown is almost gone. So there's three reasons to go long. Your stochastic crossed over the candle, one, two candles before. You got your arrow for your 20% uh, crossover, four reasons to go long. Your RSI, if you look down below, your RSI gave you the signal, I mean, way down here, it actually gave you the signal right there to go long, but you had straight, almost straight up on RSI, five candle, 20 minutes before that. And that's why I was saying RSI, what I like about it is it tends to give you a little bit like earlier detection of, of what's going on, of what's gonna happen. And it's, that's a perfect example right there. There's five reasons to go long. The only thing that you could possibly say no of not going is our bias dots didn't line up, which would give us six yeses. Um, but I, I would take that after having read for so long and going down, I would take that as a yes, but let's add in, um, Elliot Wade for that six, four moving average. Let's see where it ended up at. Cause so we're at five. Yes. And there you go. Cyan crossed over right here. We were above the six, four moving average right underneath that yellow line. So now you have six solid reasons to take that trade. Uh, that, uh, hey, I appreciate you, Stan, putting that on there so everybody can see that. Uh, so there's six reasons to go along. I don't have any reasons not to take this trade. And then you, ha you do get your green uh, dot way up here if you wanted to wait. There's seven, okay? And then adding in roller coaster gave you the signal right here. Now you have eight reasons to go long. So zero, you had basically none. You had one reason maybe uh, not to take the trade and five yeses that I'm gonna take it. But then you add six, four move and average, roller coaster entry up here. You have seven, eight reasons to go long and none. And, the, and look at the trade. It was a damn good trade that took off um, if you stayed in that trade, even though it stopped you out right there, uh, I mean, look how far it went up that, uh, 56 from 41, it's a $510, uh, one contract trade on it. All right, guys, we've got seven minutes left. What else do you guys want me to go through in the last seven minutes? And I can run over later for you guys. I don't mind if you don't mind staying. Um, anything I can do to help y'all. Look at this move. Look at this roller coaster and look where it stopped. Stopped exactly on the channel line. Think of a 41.29 and went to 40.52. Jesus, 50. 37, yeah, that's an 80 some cent move, $800 for one contract on that move. This uh, five minute time frame on oil is really freaking good. Like, I mean, go when you go through and you see, when you see the yellow line or the, uh, it paints your stop inside of there, those are good moves. Like really, and look at this, back to back to back. This was a good move too. Now, you know my thing, I don't like 
I like taking it after the second leg out. Um, I wouldn't count that one as a winner, but good one, good one, good one, small one, good one, good, super good one right there. Uh, this five minutes is really good. Let's go to four. And just turn off Elliott Wave. Four minutes is not looking bad at all either on oil. And boy, that uh, three minutes has been pretty phenomenal too. Three minutes has picked up some huge moves. You've had a couple little ones, you know, like stop out ones uh, that didn't hit, but boy, the ones that do hit hit big when they hit. Can you repeat everything you just said about counting? Uh, like counting the – grading the trade, Stan, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's go back to five minutes so that it's not as – let's go to 15. This may – there we go. All right. All right, on this trade right here, if you drew your channel, which that is, we know that's our one hour channel, that red channel there, and where you're at, we came down and we hit the bottom of the channel. We're coming back up. Let's zoom in here. All right, we're coming back up, which one, there's one reason to go long is because we bounced off the bottom channel line and we've respected it like completely. But we're not, let's just say that we don't take it yet. We're grading this trade. The cyan, uh, no, Trevor, there's uh, not that I know of that. Uh, now the yellow dot, if the, Floor trader pivots, um, I mean, like for me, if you were coming through here, they're right here. We came above, retested it, and then took off. So that's confirmation for me to take that trade going long. But that's uh, that's not part of our trade the fifth stuff that's on there. We're, let's stick with the trade the fifth. So we bounce off the bottom here. I'm not going to count that as one reason to go long, but this would have been my entry right down here off the center this bottom channel line. And even if you took it, say at here on that first candle that touched it, 4051, we come up, came back down, we touched it again, 4051, came back up. So it never went negative on you. Came back down here and it went to 4048. So it went three ticks short on you, 30 bucks uh, negative. Came back up and never turned around. You know, went up 93 from 48, so went up 500 and some bucks. But so we're gonna count it as this middle part right here. Now let's take off roller coaster so make this easier for you to see. Cyan crossed over the yellow, okay? Now keep in mind this first candle went above, the next candle closed above that yellow line. All right, but we're gonna grade it in the normal order. Cyan went across the yellow, crossed over, one reason to go long. We're above the purple point of control dots. Two reasons to go long. Down here, look at your bias dots. Red, 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 red. And that one big green bar that powered out of there was your indecision color. And then boom, that next candle had a green dot. Three reasons to go long. Oscillator was getting smaller, 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 smaller. You only had two more smalls before it took off. Three, four reasons to go long. Your stochastic uh, crossed over on the very next candle, if you didn't take it on this one, five reasons to go long. And then your RSI, when I was telling you, it always tells you the story way earlier. In all honesty, it gave you, this was right over <coughs> uh, 30 minutes before um, or so, this red candle right here when it came down, RSI changed directions at that point. That was actually where you start looking for a long. 
but RSI was pointing up for you uh, several candles before. So now you have six reasons to go long. Now let's turn on the Elliott wave and let's check that blue, red and blue 6-4 moving average. And there you go. There's your uh, blue and red. You're above the top 6-4 moving average line. Seven reasons to go long. And if you, um, let's see, that's, I mean, that's everything. Not, there's not one reason not to take this trade on that candle right there. There's zero reasons to not take this trade. And it, it worked out well. I mean, if you took it on the second candle, uh, $40 and 99 cents, and it went to 41.82. Now, if you wanted to add even more, and this is where the indicators work together, is roller coaster gave you a signal up there at 41.33. Now, bits got you in way down here at, you know, $230 earlier. Uh, so now you've got eight, nine reasons to go long that uh, out of there. Now, if you stayed in with roller coaster, it kept you in even higher. It got you up to 41.93 in your original entry point. You have 90, it's $930 on one contract. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, out of there. And th that's how you tie them in. Now, if you turn all of this stuff on at the exact, let me, let me do something else here too. You also had some high volume bars right here too. If you had your volume on, I leave it off for the demo because it uh, takes up so much space. But if you look, we had high volume going down and then we tapered off really low right there. And then boom, a nice big power bar so that you could add that in as nine or 10 on your reasons to go long on there. Uh, now, if you put all this stuff on here at one time, you're not going to be able to see your moves. Um, you've either got to split your screen up and do one with roller coaster, um, one with bits. I, I mean, I, I, this is how I do it. I leave roller coaster off. I leave Elliott Wave off. Uh, now I'll put roller coaster on that. Like we'll hit this thing here. I'll turn on roller coaster. If I don't have a lot of uh, moves that are hitting, then I'll turn it off but we're hitting him on here, but I want to be able to see the screen easier. So I leave it off. I do my channels with bits to see where I'm at. I see a potential move like this one right here. Here's a good one. We were going down, uh, going down, going down, going down. And Cyan crosses over right here at this point. Let me make it bigger where you can see it. One trade going short. All right, all right, hold on. Let me find, let's just go. There's one right here. All right, so this was a trade. I'm gonna take off volume because it covers up the screen. So we know in the big picture, this is the center channel line, okay? We come down right here and cyan crosses over yellow right there. All right, there's one reason, and this is a 15 minute chart, so it's gonna be a little more spread out. I think the, when you find these moves on uh, a 15 uh, chart, you drop down into the five, four, or three for your entries, because you'll get a more precise entry of uh, where to take it at. Like more than likely, here, let's just look at this. This is 2030. Let's go back here and see if I can get this channel in here. Bear with me, guys. When you drop down to the smaller time frames, there we go. It's harder to find that. Okay, so we're looking for 2030. Right. Come on, 2030. Okay, so on the 15 minute chart, let me, I'm trying to make this as fast as I can, guys, to get in here. On your 15 minute chart, it had you get in at 2030 is what it showed. 
which is right here. Now your three minute had your precise entry right here at 41.79. Didn't cross over. It came back up and retested the point of control. If you look that wick of that candle touched those purple point of control dots. So it retested that yellow line and the uh, purple point of controls before it started going down. So uh, three minute chart got you in at three minutes later than the 15. Now keep in mind on the 15 minute chart, that's one big candle. You can't see that's three of these candles in there. So grading it on a short going down. Okay, cyan crossed over your yellow, one reason to go short. We're below the purple point of control dots, two reasons to go short. Now drop down below where it crossed over as I just hover my mouse on where it crossed over. All right, now look down below, go look down below. And what do you see? We have a million green dots before and we have our first yellow indecision. There's three reasons to go short because we've been green forever and we've crossed over. Now look at your Elliott Wave uh, oscillator. Look at how it crowned out several uh, bars before and got smaller, 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 smaller. That, so now you have four reasons to go short. Now look right here, you have your stochastics crossed over 80 going down, five reasons to go short. And good old RSI, clear the hell up here at the, at the very peak of the top. What did RSI tell you? Look for a reason to go short. Six reasons to go short. Okay. Now let's turn on Elliott Wave. And this is what you like. You can turn the Elliott Wave on when you're ready to grade something if you want. That uh, if you're looking at it and we're not in a trending deal, we're not doing it, turn it off. Okay. But now we're crossing over. Okay, at that crossover, guess what? We're below the 6-4 moving average, that red line. Now you have seven reasons to take that uh, trade short. So and, and zero reasons not to take it, seven reasons to take it. And where did we go? 41.79. And it came one candle right here. Still kept you in a profit and just kept on moving down. I mean, you just, there's no reason to get out of that trade because you had a trending, um, trending down. Now you did have a fifth wave move right there going down. That's going to probably, uh, you know, me on, on when a fifth wave move happens, I'm like, say this comes down here. As soon as it hits the blue and starts going in, I move my stop loss to the blue line of it because typically nine out of 10 times it will touch it, turn around reverse and go the other way and look what it did reversed and went the other way. So this uh, bits move right here got you 41.79 clear down to 41.39. That was a $400 move on it. I mean, and keep in mind, that's a three minute chart. So you went from 20.33 to 1.27. Uh, so a couple hour move, but that's not a bad, uh, bad little move. All right, guys, it's 8.07. I know we all want to hang out all night, but we can't. Um, I appreciate y'all coming out and hanging out again. Uh, Bill, it's real easy here. Let me, it's J Dub Tick Trader. You cannot miss my bald head. It's right here. J D U B. Actually, here, I'll just put it in here. J Dub Tick. Trader. There's uh, my handle in uh, trading view and I have all the training videos in there on how to set up um, all the defaults for all of the trade the fifth stuff. And then if you guys need to get a hold of me, uh, trade the fifth.com. There's my email, JW Snell at trade the fifth.com. Uh, you're more than welcome to send me a private message uh, like Stan did. Um, I try to answer it as best as I can. Stan, I, and Stan, you know what? Um, I'm glad you put that, that it gets clearer each time. I, sometimes people probably get a little mad at me uh, that 
I don't, uh, or that I do the same thing over and over and over. And I'm like, yes. And you need to do the same thing as I'm doing over and over and over of grading that trade and going through it. It needs to become like second nature for you where you don't even think about it. Uh, Edith, I do not know yet. Um, I believe Paul is still going to post those. We're talking about, uh, we're in the middle of talking about of just making them available to anybody, uh, on the website. Um, it, or let's, let's see, let's put it this way. Anybody that has bought an indicator from us, it will, when you log in, it'll just be available. Uh, that's, I'm trying to get that, uh, put that on there. Muscle memory stand exactly. Yep. Good, Bill. That, uh, all right, guys. Um, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. That, uh, uh, did I miss any questions? Anybody else in there? Hey, Gary. Thanks, man. Is there anybody else in here? Did I not answer your question? Cause I'll answer it right now that, uh, I don't mind at all. Sure. Let me, uh, let me put it in here. I'm going to do it again. There you go. And there's my trading view um, handle name, whatever you call it. Uh, you can't miss my bald head in there. Till next time, Bill. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Bye, Janine.